Hello, everybody. Welcome back for StarCraft II action. We have Showtime going up against Harstam in the Gens or Bellum Gens Elite 2024. It's a PvP. We're loaded up into Oceanborn <clears throat> for a best of three. And these players recent recently played against each other, uh, at least on our channel, at the Home Circuit Cup 25. They were in the same group. Group C, uh, we did catch uh, or cast that series. So if you want to watch that for a little bit of context, uh, go now. Otherwise, I'm going to be spoiling it just a little bit. And Showtime and Harstam played that series. It was a two to one. And Showtime was favoring Twilight a little bit more than Robo, whereas Harstam was favoring Robo a little bit more than Twilight. Now, on in that series, they played a best of three on Oceanborn, and they both went for Stargate first, and Showtime ended up rushing Stargate, like super duper fast Oracle, whereas Harstam went for a lot of Stalkers out of his gateway. So usually they go Stalker Sentry, but I think Harstam was making just Stalker, Stalker, Stalker. And so we saw Showtime get a lot of damage done with a Stasis Ward uh, and stopping a lot of mining and then going for a fast Nexus as well. And Harstam ended up sniping that Nexus. So they had similar positions as they had in this game. So let's see what happens this time around. Harstam going for a proxy pylon over here. I feel like he did that in that Ocean or Born game as well. Just making sure that he can see any tomfoolery going on there plus hiding your uh, pr the pylon is the biggest thing because showtime needs to see that third pylon where which is now being built and it looks like like it's the second one so with the scouting that showtime has versus that scouting that harstam hash harstam sees one or well he could have seen one two three pylons where he only sees two. Oh. Showtime leaves a pylon behind, making sure that he knows which uh, units come out of the gateway. We see double stalker from Harstam, and we see sentry stalker coming out from Showtime. Showtime even spotting this pylon. Now we see two stalkers, two sentries coming out of Showtime, whereas we had the double stalker production from Harstam and these two stalkers, oh my god, they walked up the ramp and these sentries don't fool around anymore. Those tickle beams do a lot of damage versus shields nowadays. And, well, it's just such a classic. Walking up a ramp without vision and especially that move command from Harstam. Ooh, that is rough. Do see one probe here from Showtime. I guess it was still scouting around the map. Let's go down, and let's look at the tech. Twilight being favored by Showtime, and Robo being favored by Harstam. As if I knew what I was talking about. I mean, I just looked at the previous series before I started casting. Holy shit. It's kind of interesting to see how many sentries they make in this matchup nowadays with the free hallucination, which, I mean, that's been the case for years now. But it really makes this an interesting mirror matchup where you can't really hide anything unless it's very early on. Like, unless it's such an early pylon, you ju you're going to have a very hard time hiding anything because these hallucinated phoenix are just going to be flying around scouting your uh out your opponent oh no shades coming out of the adepts from Harstam. the shades do not get in though you get a little bit of information i suppose but nothing crucial the robo has been revealed because of the hallucinations Harstam however has not seen anything that is peculiar because he does have a lot of energy on these sentries does he not want to know does have the observer here. Maybe he just wants to have more energy on his sentries to do an offensive move. 
We're going to keep an eye on that. First Immortals out on the field. We see a Forge coming out. Still no Twilight for Harston, but also no Robo for Showtime. Now the Robo does go down. Let's see. Harston still hasn't seen everything. This Observer staying at the third. This move out probably detected. And is Harston ready? He has a shield battery. He has an Immortal. But this doesn't look like... Like, Showtime really wants to fight here. Ooh, even hallucinates a second Immortal. Just making sure that he's too afraid to even fight this. I love that. Look at that. Just hallucinate an Immortal. Oh, couple workers going down here in the natural. Three probes do go down to two Adepts. Nice split from Harstam there. And now it looks like he has three Immortals, whereas he only has two. Very nice move. Twilight Council now coming out from Harstam. And Blink is already out for Showtime. Charge is coming up as well. Forge now starts plus one. And plus one for Harstam is actually a little bit behind. Um, since he's definitely finished his Forge a lot earlier, but then he just couldn't quite start plus one and was probably afraid to lose then and there. Six more gateways being added on here by Showtime. Both players have only two gates right now. Four of them are underway for Harstam. So Showtime is going to be up two gateways. Both players on three bases. <clears throat> Both on 60 probes. Let's look at the gas counts. You see three gases for Showtime and four for Harstam. So Showtime favoring the mineral count a little bit more. You see that in the gate count, he's going for charge slot, even getting a Templar Archives. This could be a transition into Archon Immortal, or a charge slot Archon, I'm sorry. Very curious that Harstam isn't thinking about a fourth base just yet now sending out a probe Upgrade. hasn't seen the fourth base of showtime and harston seems to be getting outpaced a little bit right now this phoenix sees the fourth base halfway done that does not feel good because i feel like harston shouldn't feel behind in this game he hasn't really lost a lot of units he's lost a stalker and three probes you know i guess the early move kind of hurts like signaling to Showtime right away that Showtime can be greedy. We do see the first Archon out on the map. Archons, of course, very good against opposing charge zealots. Now these stalkers, dude, what the hell? They get into the back lines, catch two reinforcing zealots, click them down. The army of Harstam comes back to deal with it, delaying any type of aggression or pressure. I mean, there is no base here to pressure. So what is this move out really designed to do here for Harstam? Let's look what he's doing behind it. He's getting plus two. He's getting more gateways. He's getting a fourth base, but I don't see, like, a robotic support facility. Um, what's it called? I don't know. The, the, the thing that lets you make Colossi. Robotic support bay? I don't know. It's eluding me right now. But we're, we're not seeing, like, additional tech. We're not seeing an edge anywhere. Look at this. Just lots of charge zealots on both sides. We see a little bit of a lead in the immortal department from Harstam because he did have that earlier robo. You can see a nice cannon coming out. So entrenching himself or himself into these four bases. This immortal might be added on into the army later on. And both players just sitting on their four bases. Harstam has a little bit of a pro count lead. And both players still such a low gas count. Both of them four gases. So many minerals just being pumped into zealots. It's kind of funny to see how the most basic Protoss unit is the best one in this matchup. Just going into mass, mass zealots. Do you see a little run by here from Harstam. I missed it. Well, we saw it splitting off, but it didn't quite catch it moving towards the base of Showtime. Does catch a couple Stalkers there, but he doesn't really get anything done. Doesn't get a lot of pro kills or anything. Now, look at that. 
He lost 14 zealots for... Or, yeah, 14 zealots, no stalkers killed. He killed three zealots and two adepts in total. That was a bad, bad run by for Harstam. It buys him a little bit of time, but if you look at the supply, Harstam is behind an army supply, even if he maxes out. And, oh, this looks very familiar. Oh my god. Showtime just busting on in there. He thinks it's time to go. Reinforcing stalkers being warped in. We do have a shield battery. I haven't seen the nuclear yet. The red button hasn't been pushed yet. Oh my god, is Harstam actually pushing him back? Both players have plus two. And the reinforcement path is just as fast for both players. Although, this big immortal count from Harstam keeps him alive. And Showtime has to retreat. Now, we did see a hallucinated Colossus in that fight. That's very cheeky. Because in their game three on Oceanborn, in the home screen of 25... Harstam went for a double Robo Colossus to deal with the big charge lock count that uh, Showtime was showing. And that was a very interesting uh, way to try and deal with it. So just hallucinating a Colossus here could potentially really confuse Showtime here. Oh my god, these stalkers move in the moment Harstam tries to move out. And only four probes move. I don't know where that accent comes from. Oh, Archon drop? 11 minutes into the game, hello? What is this? Oh, big surround coming into... Oh, the stalkers! Oh, blink into the army of Harstam and just get completely crushed. That's a grinder simulation right there. Not the one where you meet other hot men. It's the one uh, from Reddler 2, Furious Revenge. That grinder. The War Prism does get taken down by the Stalkers, can now get pulled with the army. Suddenly, the army supply heavily favoring Harstam here. And Showtime splitting off his army into multiple groups. This area difficult to defend. Harstam has a lot of immortals here. Seven immortals with their shotgun arms can really deal some damage, even though they don't do any bonus damage to the Zealots. Plus three, plus three, done for both players. Well, plus three attack. And plus one shields on both sides coming out. Pretty good upgrade. Goes on to buildings as well. Really helps your Archons, which you are building quite a lot of. And your Zealots still benefit quite a bit. I think the Zealots have 40 HP and 40 shields. Oh, Bix around coming out of Showtime. Pulls the trigger, but his supply is just behind that of Harstam. The Immortals just dishing out the damage and Harstam takes down... The Maur, game number one on Ocean Born. This is proving to become quite the series. And for game number two, we load up into Crimson Court with Harstam being up a one game to zero. And Showtime has to win two in a row here to stay in the upper bracket. Now, Crimson Court was not in their last series. They played, I think, Site Delta and. Ghost River on top of uh, Oceanborn. But now they play Crimson Court. Now Ghost River and Crimson Court both a little bit weird maps. And Harstam went for Proxy Robo in their previous series. So, oh my god, what is happening with you? That Milkarik? Or however you pronounce it. He went a little bit apeshit. The Critters in Sarkov 2... They need some attention. Now, of course, the start of the game is going to be the same. And what's also going to be the same is me asking you to uh, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, if you are, of course, enjoying the Starcraft 2 content and watching some good old Starcraft together with me and uh, well, other people around the world, I suppose, that share their thoughts in the comment section. The cybercores are going down, and both the second pylons are also in the base. Now we do see this probe going out for Hurstum. There is again the Karak. Oh, it's not a Karik, it's a Karak. I watched a Hurstum video recently, and he played on Crimson Court versus a, I think, a Diamond player? Or a Platinum player? And basically the challenge was, I get unlimited gas. And Hurstum was in the bottom location, and his opponent in the top. And his opponent literally just mined through these minerals, built three stargates over here, made a bunch of void rays, and killed them. 
and it was really funny. It was, it was a really well done video. Um, you should definitely, if you haven't somehow seen that, check it out. Harstum on YouTube. Like, that was really, really cool. See him play against, like, a lower level player with such an advantage of having unlimited gas. Like, you don't have to make geysers. You don't have to pay minerals to make those geysers. You don't have to mine gas. Like, you only have to look at the mineral cost of anything. So, like, sentries are dirt cheap because they don't cost any gas. Like, it's, it's a really weird matchup. Or, well, weird game, basically. And then, as the normal player that does have to mine minerals, you, like, have to think about what they would do. I think it's, like, mathematically giga-losing. Like, unlimited losing. But, uh... You know, the pro player skill came out of Harstam. It was pretty cool to see. Now let's dive back into this game. Got a little distracted. My ADHD really repping today. A robo for Showtime and a robo for Harstam. But Showtime has a way faster robo. Now, this is something I haven't seen from Showtime in PvP. Or at least not versus Harstam. And I don't remember every PvP series of Showtime that I see. I know, what a fraud. Doesn't remember every PvP he's ever seen. So let's see what uh, Showtime does with this. Goes for a run Immortal first. I was kind of thinking, like, if you go, like, heavier Stalker count, and then go for the first Observer, you can really put on some pressure. And if your opponent also goes for an Observer, it's probably rallied across the map. You get the instant snipe. And then they just don't have a map. They can't see anything. Yeah, they can have sentries, but that is it. They can only see the, the things that their phoenix see. Which, admittedly, is a lot. But it still feels a little claustrophobic. I don't know if it's a good game plan. But, you know, it's just uh, how I personally like to approach StarCraft. What can I do to make my opponent feel bad? Or what can I do to make Swarmost in this matchup? It's either that or that. The one or the other. Let's look at the unit counts. Four sentries on both sides and a one immortal for Showtime. Which is going to spawn for Harstam. So Harstam, as long as he's defensive, is not really going to be behind in anything. Oh my god, the sentries a little bit out front here for Showtime. And Harstam taking full advantage bunch of force fields going down and we can't really see whomsts force fields are whomsts and oh my god the warpism gets targeted down these sentries are somehow still alive a lot of the sentries from harsem now go down the immortal comes in from the back we do have a warpism for showtime and does end up losing a lot of his units in the end there kind of a disgruntled fight there and Oh my, Showtime. A little bit behind in the army count here. But if he can keep Harsim from moving out, he can definitely recover. Let's look at what he's doing behind this. Bunch more gateways. We see a Twilight Console. Third gas coming in. This War Prism is looking for a little damage, but... I mean, he got a couple shots and a pylon. Twilight Console coming down for Harsim as well. Neither player mining these juicy golden minerals. Oh my, the glaives coming out of Showtime. I like it. The glaives, dude. The immortal glaive. The first time I saw, I think, Cyan do that on LCO versus... Maybe it was Showtime. I don't know, maybe it was the Drogo or something. I don't quite remember, but when I saw that Chinese player do it, I was like, is this just a weird thing only the Chinese players do? But I've been seeing it from others now, and it's kind of cool. Because, you know, Glaives is not Blink and it's not Charge. So, like, you're getting this upgrade instead of the Blink and the Charge, with, which are both really good upgrades. <laughs> like, even last game, or a lot of other PvP, you see Protoss is basically decide between, well, do I go Blink first, or do I go Charge and then Blink, or do I go Blink and then Charge? Because you're gonna get them. But going for Glaives, even... 
Like, you didn't even go, like, super fast Twilight here. You went Robo first, and then you go into Glaze. Like, that tells me that there's actually a spot for that upgrade in this matchup. Because, yeah, Harsim is going for Charge Slot. And, of course, Adepts do bonus damage versus Light. Zealots are Light. Plus one, plus one. Oh my god. Luckily, there was no Blink here. These Stalkers would have destroyed that Warpism if... Uh, Blink just finished, but that did not happen. It was charged instead. Now we do see Blink coming out of Showtime. Oh my lord, he has 14 Adepts. He has four Immortals. He has more Immortals, and Harstam is in the middle of the map, moving out. Showtime, go! Oh my god, this is going to be a weird one. Is this a base race? Third base does go down for... Showtime, and uh, Showtime is in the natural. Harstam uh, reacts with pulling his probes away, runs into the base of Showtime, and we are going to have a weird base race scenario here. Who can, well, destroy their opponent the most efficient way? I am very surprised to not see a bunch of adepts go into the main, but then you leave yourself very vulnerable to a mass recall from Harstam, but instead, both players are just, oh my god, Showtime ran away with a bunch of probes. He's ready for this. He's building it. I mean, he has a warpism. Dude, just put it over there. Okay. And now he goes into the main. Is there going to be a recall? Because there's a bunch of stalkers here. Oh my god. All the probes going down. And does Harstam have a warpism? Yes, he does. He could... He does. He does grab his probes here. He saves the probes. Not just the Queen, but also the probes have been saved. He spots this Nexus, and he already built a sh shield battery with his War Prism. Wow, dude. Showtime is so ready for this base race. Okay, so both players don't have anything except for their army and their probes. Harstam does not have money for a Nexus because he just built one near the rich Vespine Geyser. That is interesting. I don't know if I like this. Is this a defensible position? I guess. Like, maybe you want to be here? That seems decently defensible? I don't know. The main base is obviously the most defensible. Showtime's main doesn't even look that unappealing. Maybe just the natural. That seems pretty good. I think taking your opponent's natural is, uh... Maybe... Optimal? But just getting the Nexus down ASAP was pretty optimal here. Look at that. Showtime has to use most of the money to build more pylons. He does have one extra, that's nice. What is this game? They just... Like, Crimson Court basically has two paths, and they just walked by each other. Well, Showtime just was at the third base, was basically denying this space, and Harstam, I don't know if he saw it and was like pulling the trigger, like, oh, I'm not defending against that adept ship. Or the other way around, that they just didn't see each other. Harstam with the Immortal Drop. There is barely any Stalkers. There's one Stalker on the side of Showtime. One Stalker, one Sentry. So he has almost no anti-air. Very well, like, very cognizant of Harstam to see that here. And the Mauer, or the Mauer. Yeah. In showtime here, well, nice pylon placement, bro. Has to just stay back until he finally has enough money to make a gateway and a cyber core and then a stargate. Or just two, three gateways and make a bunch of stalkers. Like, how do you... How do you remake your tech here? This is very annoying by Harstam. I love this movement. Like, all these buildings, as soon as showtime leaves, he can kill these pylons and just set Showtime back so much. A gateway is being built. We don't even see a gateway from Showtime here. It's just making pylons that are not going to do anything. I think... I think you want to have a gateway and a core and then make shield batteries in case you want to defend. Like, you don't have to make a lot of them, but at least one or two to use the overcharge. And actually, Showtime... Pulling the trigger here, Mass Recall used by Harstam. His Immortals are in the Warpism, weren't fighting for a short while there. Oh my god, so many Adepts, no Shades going out to Confuse. 
uh, Harston, but maybe you confuse yourself when the shade goes out. Oh my god. The Mauer actually pushing through here. The Archons doing their best to kill the Adepts, but the juggling from Showtime is just too much. And uh, just like that, Harstum. I felt like he had like a vice grip on this game. But in the end, like Showtime's army was just slightly too strong. Was able to shade on top of this ramp. I don't think there were any shield batteries because I don't see a cyber core just yet. And he, wow, he was even mining gas, even though he could not spend his money for the life of him. What a difficult position. Maybe you even make a forge. I don't know. It's so difficult because you have to know, like, I guess we have to turn these around now, that you have to know, like, do I have the better army if I defend? Or can I kill him because I have the better army even when I attack? Or do I have a worse army, but if I defend, I'm okay? Like, what's your position? Like, do you need to, like, rush for something stupid like DTs? I don't know if there were any... There was one observer for Showtime, so I guess only in the cards for Showtime there. Ah, and cannons. What a game. Let's go to game number three. And for game number three, we are loaded up into Alcyone or Alcyone. It's definitely Alcyone. For a PvP versus Showtime. Or between Showtime and Arstum. And that game two was a wild one. This is the third game we cast from the BGE. Or the Bellum Gens Elite. Bellum Gens Elite. Bellum means war, I think, in Latin. I'm almost 100% sure. Yeah, I had Latin in middle school 15 years ago, so, you know, I know, like, four words. Let's see what these players bring out for game number three. They did not play this map in their best of three at the Home Street Cup, so anything is on the table. It's just one win. And Showtime already crossed the map with his probe. Now, I thought about when I do this the subscriber shout out, right? Like, I just want to have 500 subscribers at some point. Because uh, that's like the first milestone for any small YouTuber, right? That's when you get like more options, I think. And I think memberships or... I don't know. I just know it's the first milestone. I just, I just need a goal. I don't... That's all I need. But if I do it after game two, or like at the start of game three, it, that basically means that anytime I have a best of three, I spoil it by not doing it at game number two. If that makes sense. Because if you know, I'm, I always do it during the last game of the series. Then if I do it in game two, you know the other person is going to 2-0. But if I always do it game two, then you don't know if it's going to be game number three. So I kind of have to do it just to make sure there's no like pattern you can like have in your brain, even subconsciously, to somehow know the outcome of the game. I don't want to spoil it. You know, it's already annoying enough to be uh, to be the YouTuber guy. Like, oh, please subscribe, like my video. I don't know. It just it's so weird. Not like you don't mean it, but it just... You've heard it so many times by consuming YouTube yourself that it... And I've said it, like, well, at least 150 times now. It feels weird. I can tell you that much. Well, one probe does bite the dust. First blood of the map. Goes to showtime. And both players going for an expansion. And we see that fast Stargate coming out of the Mauer. Whereas we see a Robo for Harstam, he goes back to the tried and trusted and tested and bested Robo play. And the Hallucinated Phoenix is going across the map. This Oracle only halfway done. And eh, we can see it here. Wait, can I see? No, this doesn't help. Oracle is inside this Stargate. And a second one even is being created. 
Look cool. Oh, oh my god. Oh! Harstim cancels the Robo, goes into Twilight. Does that mean that Robo loses to Stargate always? Or does he just not like playing it into Showtime? I wish I was a Protoss player just for this moment. You know, just that I could communicate with myself from a different reality where I was a Protoss player. Where I could now just have that knowledge like, yeah... Robo into Stargate just feels bad. You don't want to play that. Or, no, it's fine. It's fine. It's just a, a stylistic choice. You know, I just... I need the knowledge. So if you're a Protoss player, let me know. Robo on top of the Stargate. So no Twilight this time around. Or Showtime, or at least not yet. You do see the blink coming out of Hearthstone, which, of course... Well, the Twilight has been spotted, but... He hasn't seen that an upgrade has started, but you can assume that one starts. Unless it's going to be a DT rush, which, I mean, there is already a Robo. And even an Observer. Which I guess is kind of like a Platinum League counter, right? If your opponent is going Stargate, you just go Dark Templar, and it's it's all Ogre. And that's why you go Stargate, Forge, Cannons, Carriers. Foolproof. Oh. Harstum. Building a pylon in the middle of the map. <laughs> These little medic teenage dude. There's a Twilight now going down from a... Showtime, he has assembled the Holy Trinity of the tech structures for Protoss, or all three of the tech paths. That is Twilight, Robo, and Stargate. I wish Tempest were hype in PvP, but they're sadly not. Third base going down for Harstum, but it's already done for Showtime. Holy moly, Showtime is so good at just throwing down these third bases that are just hard to contest. You don't feel safe. Or at least I wouldn't feel safe, but he kind of knows that he can defend most of the times. Forge coming out of Harstam and Charge as well. This pylon, is he going to build a gate and really push out some pressure? Because you can take this high ground fairly easily as the aggressor, because you can move in from multiple sides, and then you can kind of pressure the field center of your opponent. Yes, we're calling this the field center now. And a Robo is coming out of Harstam as well. Lots of gates coming out of the Mauer. Three gas charge slot and a Twilight Console or uh, Templar Archives as well. So it's going to be that charge slot Archon style that we saw in game one from Showtime. Harstam. Are you ready for that assault? Or is this just defensive? Is he just going to make the gates and then transition? I like that as well. I like that idea a lot. Where you just have the gates. Like, how many gates does he have? He has four. With two more finishing up. Yeah, it's, it's a little weird when they're finishing up. Yeah, he's six of them now. So six for Mr. Mauer. One, two, three, four, five. No, he's eight. See? The game is... Because they're still morphing from gateways to warp cores or warp gates. That for a little while, the the building tab is a little weird. Fourth base going down for both sides. Both players decently similar probe counts. Both players going for plus one. I want to see Harstam mine this out further. Uh, come on, probe, come on. I pr you don't want to get caught off when your whole army's here and it's like a 200-200 army. And then your opponent attacks over here and you're like, you have two minerals mined out. The game just ends. Because you can't get back to your base. It hurts every time. Like, the two Archons will bump into each other and just not get through. If you're a Zerg player, you understand. Because Queens do that a lot. If Queens want to get through, like a one hex spot behind the mineral line, they'll bump, like, two Queens will try to go through this corridor and just keep bumping into each other and never get through. It's so annoying. 
Showtime, though, pulls the trigger. We do have a shield battery that can't be overcharged because the Nexus is not done. Harstam gets pushed off of his fourth base. But in the meanwhile, we do see a nice run by off charge slots. Again, Harstam are really favoring the, the run bys here, whereas uh, Showtime prefers to do big army movements and then uh, pushing his weight around like that. Oh, the stasis ward was seen right away by Harstam. Nice move. Blinks forward into his opponent. An aggressive blink is definitely still called a blunk. And one Immortal versus three. Is that what is going to decide the outcome of this match? The probes are, well, not doing much. They could come off the line and help. Oh my god, the stalkers go forward again. Two Immortals remaining. Nice target down from Harston, but oh my god, lots of reinforcing stalk or zealots here. Two Immortals in the back. Those could save Harston here. And did he overstep a little bit? Because he's fighting for an area that he doesn't even have a base in anymore. He just needs to win this army fight because his opponent does have a fourth. Now, he did kill a bunch of probes, but Shar Showtime has already rebuilt them. Oh my god, he actually only killed three probes? Is that for real? Harstam is so, so behind. And, oh my god, he just walks up the ramp confidently. Some of these Archons don't even get to shoot. The nuclear battery has been committed. No fourth base has been rebuilt. Harstam broke as a joke. Not really, because he's a YouTube star. But in this game... This a stupid joke. He is ready. Oh my god, showtime. I think he's doing it. He waits out the nuclear battery, sets up his Archons in a nice concave, well, that's a convex, making sure that they can all fire. The Immortals are in the back, and only one Immortal remains for Harstam, and he goes down to Showtime. Two to... Oh. Two to one. And history does repeat itself, but I have to say that Harstam looked really strong, and I kind of felt like he was going to win this game. But in the end, he did not. Oh, his plus two was actually way later than Showtime. As a as a non-Protoss player, it kind of looked like Harstam just did a run by, lost a bunch of units, and Showtime was just like, huh, that's inefficient. Now my army's bigger. I'm going to go kill you. I have more Immortals. I have better upgrade. And I have more Zealots now as well. And he also couldn't quite get that shoe battery up. Well, um, that's going to be it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching um, me casting some PvP. I hope you enjoyed. I promise it will get better in the future. <laughs> Just a little bit of a discombobulated day for me. I hope you still enjoyed, and I really hope to see you in the next one. Cheers.